Good afternoon. Welcome to Devash Lafi. Beautiful day, and I guess this is why people live in California. The weather's a lot like this all the time. But I'm glad I live in Middle Tennessee. I love it here. Love to be here because God placed us here, and I, He's placed you wherever He's placed you in the will of God. You know, it says to the believers at Ephesus, at wherever they were, and yet they're in Messiah. We're in Messiah wherever we are, and that's what's important. We're in the will of God. And that's the important thing is to be where he has placed you, being his witness people. And you know what? Antipas is called my faithful witness, my faithful witness. We're dealing with Pergamum, Pergamum in Revelation or the Apocalypse chapter 2 verses 12 throughout in the several through 17. And he is the one who is martyred and he's called my faithful witness yeshua says john's writing and he he says uh, to the angel of messiah's community the one to the, thus says the one who has the sharp two-edged sword i know where you live where satan's throne is you're in the battlefield you're where satan's throne is you're in the in the in the thick of it you're where the battle is raging where Satan, where the conflict is most severe, where it's most intense, not where it's easy, not where it's easy to be a believer. Do you know that believers, <clears throat> Jewish believers, were called meshamed, meshamedim, plural, meshamedim, traitors, renegade Jews for centuries, for years. That's what we were called to be. For me to be a follower, for you to be a follower of Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, you were considered to be a traitor, and still, it's not. It's the same today but in, in certain circles. Thank God for Jewish people who are open and realize that he is the Messiah and realize that Jew, Messianic Jews, Jewish, whether you call them Messianic Jews, Jewish believers, the older terms used to be Jewish Christians or Hebrew Christians in a century ago. <clears throat> but you know what? Whatever the term is, like followers of the way it used to be, Haderach in the first century, few centuries, first century anyway. It, thank God for those believers, those people who are open and say, we have a place in the community, Jewish community, just like everyone, other, every other type of Jew. I mean, the Jewish community can accept those with many, many different moral views and, and uh, very extreme liberal views and all sorts of crazy views. How can they not accept we who, are, who have biblical views and yet believe in the Jewish Messiah? and still claim to be Jew. But you know that for years we've been called traitors. And you know, that's not, that's not anything different from what Yeshua said, that he said, if, every, if the world loves you, if, the, if, ever, if everyone loves you, you're not doing my will. Uh, he was despised and rejected of men, right? He says, if, if those who love the praises of men more than the praises of God are not of me. And woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so spoke they of the false prophets. So this is, this is not, nothing new. And uh, Pergamum, he calls, in, when he's writing, writing to Pergamum, he says, you're dwelling where Satan's throne is, and you did not deny your faith, they, uh, yet you continue to hold firm to my name. Listen to this, verse 13. Yet you continue to hold firm to my name, to, my, to who I am, you know, his name just, doesn't just mean Yeshua here, my, but it does. It includes that. It's, of course, it's Yeshua. But my name is who I am, who I represent. And so it includes that. Uh, Yeshua, who I am, and you did not deny your faith in me, in me. Even in the days of Antipas, Antipas, my faithful witness. He's my faithful witness. He's faithful to testify to me. He's not ashamed of the gospel, not ashamed of the gospel. You know, Paul says, don't be ashamed of the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. Some were ashamed of the, you say, well, I'm not ashamed of, of, of Yeshua, but yet you're ashamed to be associated with those that love him. And in, in, in certain circles, you don't want to be associated with those that love him in certain circles because you're afraid of the reproach that you'll get from those people. You're afraid of being rejected. You don't want to be popular. Now, that's the opposite of the Spirit of God. That's the opposite of Yeshua. 
He's not going to be always popular. He's not afraid to be unpopular because he was. If we seek the, to be popular with men, you know, I call Hebrews 11 the celestial celebrities because there's no celebrities in heaven. There's only God's celestial celebrities. And we're popular with him. If we're popular with God, we're, pop, we're, we're popular, the right kind of popularity. My faithful witness, faithful testimony. And, and what an amazing thing. Ant Antipas was my faithful witness, my faithful witness who was killed among you. He was killed among you. And he said, uh, where Satan resides. You know, he was slowly roasted, the historians say, slowly roasted, if you remember, uh, if I have it here, slowly, kind of gross, but slowly roasted to death in a brazen bowl on a pagan altar, AD in AD 92, during the reign of Domitian. So here, many, he was martyred, many at Pergamum are going to be martyred as well for following Yeshua, for embracing Yeshua. Paul says, don't be ashamed of me, nor of the Lord, no, of the Lord nor of me, his prisoner. Second Timothy, I think it's 1, 8 or 9. Don't be ashamed of me, nor of the, of the Lord, nor of me, nor of me, his prisoner. Because he's, we're not ashamed of the Lord or of those who are associated with him, who belong to him and are persecuted before belonging to him, who are reproached, bringing reproach. He was despised and rejected of man. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, verses three and four. A man of sorrow. So, okay, so. Uh, this is this is Pergamum, and they're going to be rewarded. Do you know what? They're going to be rewarded in heaven. Amazing. They're going to for hanging in there and for not quitting, for not compromising, not compromising. But but he warns them and he challenges them. He says, "I have a few things against you," and he and he tells them what they've done. They have compromised some. They've allowed to hold to the teaching of Baalam who was teaching Balak to be a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat food sacrificed to idols, commit sexual immorality. So he says, and those, and then also some who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. And so he says to repent from this, but all the, these different false er erroneous teachings, uh, heretical teachings. And he says, if not, I'll come soon and make war against them with the sword of my mouth. And remember he had said earlier, he says he had identifies himself as the one who has the sharp two-edged sword, the word of God. So he says, I'll use that word of God against you rather than for you, rather than to deliver you, I'll use it to judge you. And he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the Messiah's communities. It's to everyone, it's to all of us, all throughout the ages, to believers, to all the kahilo, to all the congregation, to the one who overcomes, I'll give some of the hidden manna. Powerful, supernatural provision from God hidden manna he has and I'll give him a white stone this is amazing and written on the stone a new name a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it do you want that do we want that I want that if he because he wants to give it to you he wants to give it to me if he wants to give it to I want to I want to receive I will want that hidden manna yes hidden manna and then a white stone a stone, a white stone, a stone, white stone, written a name with a new name that no one knows, a new name for you that no one knows except the one who receives it. Uh, what a, uh, a congregation and the word that God gives to them and how Yeshua portrays himself with a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth that's power, very powerful. But be, let's be his faithful witness in the midst of Satan's throne, in the midst of whatever the darkest, the, the, the severe, most severe battles. We let's be that faithful witness like Antipas, Antipas, and not be afraid, not be afraid of man, and what and and pleasing man. But let's please the Lord. Galatians 1:10. Let's please the Lord more than man. I'm not man. Not worry about what man thinks. Lord, help us, Lord, to be that that faithful witness to you, each one of us.